Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. On the train, be in Hooterville before Uncle Joe wakes up and finds out we're gone. Uncle Joe won't wake up. For dessert, I slugged him with a double dose of pumpkin pie. That'll keep him out like a light till dinner. Oh, Mom, you're awful. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? <laughs> but you know, he's so nosy. It's the only way to keep him from coming into Sam Drucker's store and finding out we got him a watch for his birthday. <laughs> and it'll work, too. A couple helpings of Mom's pumpkin pie is better than hitting him over the head with a club. Hi, hey, gang. I should have used a club. <laughs> Joe, why aren't you sleeping? I was, but I woke up. I had too much pumpkin pie. But pumpkin pie always keeps you asleep. No, it's mints that does that. <laughs> Listen, anybody can make a mistake. <laughs> Joe, see you when we get back. What do you mean, so long? This is buying day, ain't it? I'm going into Drucker's store with you like I always do. Well, uh, we're not going to buy much today, and the, and the girls can help me carry it. They're young and strong. Meaning I ain't? Well, well, of course not. It's just that you've been working so hard around here lately, uh, thinking and planning. I have been pushing pretty hard lately. Sure. You've worked hard all your life. You're entitled to relax a little. You've done your share. Come on, girl. Bye. Uh, bye, bye, bye Joe. Joe. Save your steam. They're getting on. Bye, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Joe Bradley and her mother and sisters. Oh, they'll be coming by to pick up this watch for Uncle Joe's birthday. That Billy Joe's as pretty as the moon rising over Snively Swamp. <laughs> what a beauty. Yeah. Real smooth movement, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mr. Drucker, it ain't right for you to talk that way about Billy Joe. <laughs> I'm talking about this watch. <laughs> And you keep your mind on your work. Hi, Herbie. Oh, hi, Kate. Hi, Sam. Hi, Herbie. Gee, Billy. Hi. Here's Uncle Joe's watch, Kate. 14 carat, 17 jewel, just like you ordered. Oh, Sam. Girls, look, isn't that beautiful? Oh, Mom, that's oh. lovely. Oh, that's <laughs> here, Give it here, Kate. I'll have it wrapped for okay. you. Herbie. Oh, yes, Mr. Drucker. <laughs> Herbie, you knucklehead, look at the mess you've made. Do I have to? I mean, just hearing it was bad enough. <laughs> Herbie, you ten-thumbed nitwit. Now, Sam, stop picking on him. It was Billy's fault, too. Herbie was just trying to help out. I'd like to help him out right out the front door. Now, Sam, you simmer down. That clumsy kid. Sam, Herbie's a hard-working, fine boy. He just acts clumsy because he doesn't have any confidence in himself. He feels... Inferior. Well, who has a better right? Now, Sam, <laughs> you see, you see how you're picking on him and knocking down his confidence? Let me talk to him. Maybe I can help. <laughs> 
All right, Kate, but I'm warning you. When you talk to him, don't stand under anything loose. <laughs> Lay off it, Sam. <laughs> Don't look so sad. Accidents like that can happen to anybody. I know they could. Well, good. But they don't. It happened to me. Oh. <laughs> Let's talk over here, away from anything loose. What? <laughs> it's nothing, nothing. It's just that I need room. I um, <clears throat> talk a lot with my hands. <laughs> now, Herbie, what I'm trying to tell you is, if you had the confidence in yourself that I have in you, you'd go right to the top. Oh, you're just saying that to make me feel good. Are you kidding? Anybody in these parts who runs a business, it'd love to have you working for him. And you know why? Yeah, because I work cheap. <laughs> because you're dependable, you're reliable, and you're willing. Oh, go on. Too bad you're Sam's right arm. Or you could be working for me right this minute, starting out as, um, well, as assistant manager. Oh, go on. And I mean it, Herbie. And in no time at all, you could be manager. I accept the job. I'm going to quit here and go to work for you. <laughs> oh, go on. Oh, thank you. Mr. Oh, thank you. I'm going to laugh. Someone believes in me. Whippy! When do I start? Herbie, l l listen, m m l l let's not rush into anything, huh? Oh, I get it. You just were talking. You didn't really mean it. Nobody in this whole world needs me. Oh, I need you. I I I'd love to hire you. It's just that, uh, that uh, it's Sam. That's it. He needs you more than I do. I do? What for? You see, Mr. Drucker doesn't care. I'm yours. Now, Herbie, uh, before we go any farther, uh, i got to straighten you out about something. Sure, Mrs. Bradley, and I want to thank you for hiring me as your new assistant manager because it's done more for my confidence than anything in my whole life. Then what do you want to tell me, boss? <laughs> your hours are 9 to 5. You get Thursdays off, and the customer's always right. Oh, all that and working side by side with Billy Joe. I can hardly stand it. <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> Thanks, Herbie. Merci, Herbert. <laughs> Thank you, Herbie. Well, Mrs. Bradley, uh, what room are you going to give your willing and dependable assistant manager? Who? Uh, me. <laughs> oh, yes, you. Uh, for a second, I didn't recognize the description. Uh, well, I was thinking, uh, why don't you take uh, Uncle Joe's room and... Move his things into that big corner room that he's been wanting. Right, boss. I'll start moving the stuff right away. Uh, oh, a uh, willing and dependable assistant manager. Yes, boss? Uh, it's going to be a problem moving all those things with your arms full of groceries. So why don't you take them into the kitchen and take these into the storeroom? Oh, smart thinking. Well, I can see I'm going to learn a lot working with other smart thinking people. <laughs> Here, I'll take them all. Oh, you can Here, Herbie. Thank you, Herbie. Here you go, manager. Take it easy. <laughs> Mom, hmm? the next time you get an idea to build somebody's character. Don't. Don't. <laughs> well, Irving, my boy. Here, let me give you a hand. Gee, thanks, Mr. Carson. There you are. Thanks a lot. Don't mention it. <laughs> Hey, you better get barreling it, Herbie. The cannonball will run off and leave you. Oh, I'm not taking the cannonball. I'm living here now. Mrs. Bradley made me the new assistant manager of this here hotel. Well, congratulations, Herbie. Thanks Say, you're well. coming in. Hold on a minute. What do you mean, assistant manager? Oh, she says I'm bright and dependable and trustworthy, and I'm going far in the hotel business. Well, you gotta get to the business of assistant managing. <laughs> Why would she want a young squirt like Herbie around? Why, he... You've worked hard all your life, Uncle Joe. You've earned the right to relax a little. You've done your share. Rest Done now, your Uncle share. Joe. Relax. Take it easy. Relax. Take it easy. Relax. Relax. <laughs> so that's what Kate's up to. She wants to put me out to pasture just because I got a couple of gray hair. Okay, a couple of dozen. <laughs> Can't believe that this terrible thing is being done to me by my own niece. Oh, Uncle Joe. Don't I speak to me, you... my own former niece. Uncle Joe, Same what? Same you... goes for accomplices. <laughs> Uncle Joe, what are you so darn steamed up about? You know darn well what I'm so darn steamed up about. You hired that squirt Irby to replace me. 
Oh, I did no such thing. All right, then prove it by firing him out of here right now. But, but, but I can't. You see... You bet I see. Real good. I may be an old man with double chins to you, but I still got pride enough to hold them both up. <laughs> I can't even reason with Uncle Joe. He locked his door. And when I knock, he just growls. Sounds like a room full of air to hills. Well, maybe I ought to go. Come on, my old and only friend. You and I are going to wait for the train down to the railroad tracks. Uncle Joe! I don't cotton to hang around with a bunch of strangers. Now wait, Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe, why are you carrying on so much about absolutely nothing? Well, it ain't my idea of absolutely nothing. You think I'm an old man. You're putting me out to pasture just because I got a few gray hairs. Oh, I'm not putting you out to pasture because you've got a few gray hairs. No? Then what are you putting me out to pasture for? Uncle Joe... This morning you went to town and you bamboozled me out of going with you. Yes or no? Well, yes, And when but... you come back, you brung that young squirt Herbie Bates with you and made him the new assistant manager of the hotel. Yes or no? Well, yes, but I can explain everything. All right. Then explain the part about not wanting me to go to town with you. That part I can't explain. Uh-huh. <laughs> what about bringing that young squirt Herbie here and making him assistant manager? Oh, aha uh -huh to you. I gave Herbie a little job with a big title just to build his confidence. Oh? I wanted to make him feel important. That's why I can't fire him. Maybe I was a mite hasty with my conclusion jumping. Oh, well, then it's all settled. You're staying. Here, I'll take your suitcase. Don't let go. I can handle it. No, no, no. I'll Don't take let it. go. Me. <laughs> oh, Joe. Well, I, I travel light. <laughs> oh, fraud. You never intended leaving. Oh, there's just nobody else like you. Mm. Nobody could replace you, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, I'm all set to move everything out of Uncle Joe's room and put my own stuff in there, like you told me. <laughs> Tell me that part again where you can't replace me. Well, Uncle Joe, I... I can explain everything. Badly, of course. No more empty talk, no more empty suitcases. I'm walking out of here and landing myself a big executive job. Uncle Joe, wait! Yep, I walked out of there and landed myself a big executive job. That's right, Lon. No, no, I can't disclose the exact nature of my business. It's top secret. But if you happen to run into Kate and the girls, tell them I'm in a great spot to clean up. Bye, Lon. <laughs> Evening. Uncle Joe. Oh, Uncle Where Uncle have you Joe? been, Uncle Joe? Uncle Joe? You look like Mr. Carmichael, the funeral director. No wisecracks, please. I want a little service. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? I'm registering for a room, and I demand the same respect you give other paying guests. Paying guests? Cash on the barrel head for the best room in the place. Oh, but Uncle Joe, you... That's Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson? Now you're talking. I've just accepted an important position as executive vice president of one of Hooterville's leading industries. <laughs> you may think my registering here as a paying guest kind of strange. Not strange. Ridiculous. <laughs> the explanation is quite simple. I decided to be a guest here because it is convenient to my important executive work. And because the Shady Rest Hotel has always been famous for its fine management in the past. <laughs> My key, give it to me. Boy, what I'd like to... <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Carson, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Bradley, ma'am. <laughs> And I'll expect breakfast promptly at 7.30. Mom! Huh? Remember, the customer is always right. What loudmouth says so? You, Mom. 
<laughs> oh, that loud mouth. <laughs> Joe Carson of Hooterville, you traveling men? Ned Hooper. Jenkins here and me are in the hardware line. I'm in the executive line myself. <laughs> oh? Right. I hold an important position with a firm that recognizes the value of experience and mature judgment. Not like some backward people I know who are in the hotel game. <laughs> oh, baloney. What? Oh, a baloney with your eggs or ham. Oh. I'll try the baloney, Miss Bradley. Yes, Mr. Carson. It's easy to tell you're a baloney man. Excuse me. so I'll lose the urge to kill him. But it doesn't work. Mom, how come he's acting this way? It's not like him. Oh, he just wants to prove to us what a valuable man he is and that we don't appreciate him enough. That's why he's staying here and bragging about his big executive job. A job that doesn't even exist. Oh, he's got some kind of job. He came home with money last night. My guess is that he's clerking in a drugstore or he's selling ribbons over a dry goods counter. Oh, man. Mom, why don't we follow him to where he works and blow the lid off this whole thing? Oh, we couldn't do that. On account of his pride. But we've got to do something. Honey, believe me. He's gonna get tired of pretending real soon. And go back to being his own sweet, lovable self. Hurry up with my breakfast, or I'm reporting you to my colleagues at the Businessmen's Club. <laughs> the service here is pathetic. <laughs> Girls, <clears throat> we're going to follow Uncle Joe to where he's working and blow the lid off everything, including Uncle Joe. But how about his pride? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> section where he can't see us. Damn, we forgot. It's market day. We'll have to ride with a carload of chickens. Oh, dear. Well, maybe we better wait till tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow will be full of hogs. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Start clucking. <laughs> Give Uncle Joe a job as executive vice president of my store? Okay, there's a lot less painful ways of going broke. Yeah, but, but Sam, if you told him that he'd be a great help to you, then he could quit that horrible job at Luke's Eatery and not be humiliated. Remember, he's one of your oldest friends and you've known him for years. No, I, I can't do it. Uncle Joe is a fine fellow, but he'd just be in the way around here. I don't think I'd want to hire him, even if you threw in one of your girls. What's wrong with her girls? Yeah. Yeah. Any one of us could do a darn good job here. Darn right. I'll bet if I worked here, my business would double in a week. Especially among the boys. <laughs> okay, Billy Joe. You've got the job. Oh. Whoa, Sam, whoa. We want the job for Uncle Joe. He's got it if you throw in Billy Joe. I like the way she works. But I didn't mean well, that Amber, I'm... you're one of his oldest friends. You've known him for years. All right, Mr. Drucker, bring on the work. Uncle Joe and I are raring to go. Sam, hiring me as executive vice president was the smartest move you ever made. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I'll tell you, you won't even know this business when I get through with it. Yeah, I've been thinking about that, too. <laughs> Hey, what's this? A bill for $33.87 from McGonagall, the printer? 
Oh, that must be for those 20,000 advertising circulars I had printed. Part of my clever promotional scheme. 20,000 advertising circulars? There are only 3,000 people in the whole county. I said my scheme was clever, not perfect. <laughs> Joe, since I made that smart move of hiring you as my vice president, my business has suffered four major disasters. Say, uh, you the fellas that put up that poster in the town hall about minding kids and livestock for free? Correction, five major disasters. Quiet in front of customers, Sam. <laughs> yes, madam, you've come to the right place. Druckers always lives up to their advertising claims. I expect to be a very sick man when I hear about it, ma'am. But what advertising claims did I make? <laughs> oh, here's some of the circulars. See for yourself, Sam. Notice, as part of our new policy, Drucker's yeah. store will cheerfully take care of all children and livestock while parents or owners are shopping. You see, Sam, now folks don't have to stay home because they got nobody to look after the kids and the pets. They come here and shop, and we take care of everything, just like the big stores up at the city. Shrewd, huh? Not bad, Joe. Uh, look, it's getting late. I gotta get started. <laughs> now, what'll it be, ma'am? Now, keep an eye on them and make sure they get fed proper. The dog's hungry. So are the kids. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Oh, wait a minute. Where are you going? Shopping over at Cartwright's Emporium. We've got a lot of bargains going on there today. Wait a second, ma'am. You got it wrong. We only watch kids and dogs if you shop here. But don't say that on that poster, mister. And you know what happens to stores that lies in their advertising. <laughs> and Bosco only eats fresh ground sirloin. Elsie bites. <laughs> oh, no. Sam Drucker can't fire Uncle Joe. It'll wipe out his self-respect. But if he doesn't fire him, it'll wipe out Mr. Drucker's bank account. And Mr. Drucker looks so pitiful when he cries. Well, so will Uncle Joe when he fires him. Now, there must be another way we could handle this. Hi. This thing. Oh, Billy Joe. Hi. Oh. Hi, be watch out! <laughs> That's it. That's what? Another way. A secret weapon, sometimes called a Herbie Bates. And the hotel can also use some of them fancy gourmet foods I've been reading about, like uh, caviar and pickled octopuses. Order me a dozen of each. Herbie Bates, when they handed out brains, you wasn't behind the door. You wasn't even in the building. Uh, I'm the assistant manager of the hotel. And Mrs. Bradley says whatever I think we need, I should order. That ties it. Herbie, you're pathetic. You know less about the hotel business than a backward polecat. I wouldn't talk if I were you, Mr. Carson. No offense, but when I've been hearing around town, you know less about the grocery business than a whole flock of backward polecats. <laughs> look what you're doing to my beautiful hotel. Well, look what you're doing to my beautiful store. <laughs> Terribly sorry, Mr. Drucker. Yeah, Herbie, I guess I'm going to have to hire you back again. Me? You're joshing. Well, might as well if you're going to come here and break things. That way, at least, I can take it out of your salary. <laughs> Great, Mr. Drucker. Boy, I've really been missing this place. All the hay and the grain and the chicken feed, and especially you. <laughs> Would you like your old job back, Uncle Joe? We sure need you. Yeah, you bet you do. I haven't made up my mind whether I want to get back into the hotel game. Oh, please, Uncle Joe, oh, nothing's yes, wrong. Come here, Uncle Joe. Well, that depends. Depends on what? On whether Sam can spare me. How about it, Sam? Can you spare him? Could George Washington spare Benedict Arnold? <laughs> huh? Uh, I say it'll be a struggle, but with Herbie here helping me, I'll try to scrape through. Uncle oh, Joe! Oh, Uncle Joe! Everybody, uh, to top off the homecoming celebration, the girls and me would like to present you with this fine watch in honor of your birthday. Happy birthday! 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 Happy you shouldn't have done it. Considering all the trouble it caused, you're right. I shouldn't have. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Carson. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday. Oh, Welcome back to the grocery game, Herbie. <laughs>
junction this has been a film ways presentation